Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new Ninjago video here on the channel. My name is Tanner Fishies. In today's video, we are going to be discussing another Ninjago comic brought to us by the official Ninjago magazine. Now, I've made a couple of videos as of late talking about Ninjago magazine comics, and I'd say don't get too attached to the idea of me doing these very often because for one, I do not get these magazines in my country, so I have to wait like months after the comics get published to actually read them and talk about them. And for two, I mean, a lot of these comics don't really have a whole lot going on. Some of them definitely do, but a lot of them do not. When they do have something going on, I will definitely try my best to talk about them, but more often than not, they are just kind of silly little side stories, not really meant to be anything of major importance. However, I did get a request to talk about the comic that will be featured in today's video involving the administration and it does have a J cameo. So to me, yeah, those are two very good reasons to check out this comic. So without further ado, let's get to it. Just remember these comics are definitely not considered 100% canon. I feel like they could be, but the show doesn't really acknowledge these comics. So I guess take them as you will. So here's the comic in question. This is the one that I was requested to talk about. This comic is known as Agents All Around. And yes, it has quite a bit to do with the administration, and like I said, there is a J cameo a little bit later. But for the timeline, it's very obvious when this takes place because they literally say it right here. After the ninja have put an end to the Blood Moon ritual, and Cole and Zane are escorting the sorceress Gandalaria home. So this is literally, I think, the next day following the ninja's successful canceling of the Blood Moon ritual, and of course the day after Kai and Bonzel were banished to nether space. But essentially what's happening here is the ninja are pretty much just chilling in the Cloud Kingdom, I guess, fo following their little victory, but then they notice something going on down below, that something being the administration. For some reason, the administration are here investigating the ritual of the Blood Moon, investigating this site. You can pause and read if you want. I'm not going to read through like literally every piece of dialogue here, but it's there if you want to read it. Lloyd says, I want to take a closer look at that. Good for you, Lloyd. Again, the art here is, uh, is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> not scary at all. But anyway, Lloyd leads the ninja down off the thing. Follow me, everyone. Let's go talk to these agents here. Uh, this guy in particular. So you were here. You witnessed the incident? Lloyd tries to, like, play it off there. Um, <laughs> obviously, the administration agents, just by nature, are pretty stingy. I'm sure we all know that. Lloyd realizes that he said too much, tries to take it back. Uh, speaking of taking things, the administration is is trying to confiscate uh, one of the arms of Sora's elemental mech because apparently it's a much more advanced design. Need to take it back to the administration for further investigation. Open the portal, open the portal, and of course they do indeed open the portal. The ninja obviously don't really feel comfortable with them taking part of Sora's mech, hence why Lloyd, Sora, and Nia are going. Aaron decides to stay behind, I mean, probably because he's had enough of the administration, except he changes his mind last minute, but it's all too late. Great. I do like how Ryu looks in this comic. He looks pretty good. Not really taking after his uh, set counterpart, like a lot of other set-based things in this comic do. For example, Sora's mech here, as you can see, the arm is literally built the exact same way as it is in set form. And sometimes Ryu looks a little bit questionable. Like here, he looks kind of like his set counterpart. Not exactly though. Uh, very bizarre. It, like even Jiro up here, maybe they have like a rule against organic builds not being uh, built of Lego in the comics. Um, if any of that even made sense. Just something that I noticed. Uh, so now the ninja are back in the administration. Hooray for that. Uh, and they decide to use spin jitsu to make their time a little bit uh, shorter in said administration. Now it is worth noting that Sora here is still using her wonky little spin jitsu, which we did not see in season two, part one. We only saw that in season two, part two. So did she unlock it literally the day after or... 
What's the deal there? Maybe this is just what she was able to do ever since she started training with Rontu, but we did not see it physically until season two, part two, or rather here for the first time in the Ninjago timeline. Again, if this comic is canon, which I don't see why it couldn't be. It's just a small little side story afterwards. Doesn't really impact a whole lot. Anyway, Lloyd manages to take back the arm of Sora's mech. They do a little bit of like a hot potato thing here. <laughs> and what I really enjoy, again, Sora's spin jitsu here, what I really enjoy is just how little uh, the ninja care about hurting the administration agents. And you'll see that here um, in these next couple of panels because they do some pretty crazy stuff. Uh, but anyway, Sora adds the little arm to her mech. Hooray, now all they need to do is escape. Unfortunately, the portal is closed, but they figure out a way to uh, get Sora to open up a portal, kind of like an artificial administration portal. It's not like an official one, but you know. But anyway, continuing on here, here's the J cameo. At least I think that's J. I mean, it looks like J. He's got sunglasses. He's making an announcement over the intercoms, probably. Why doesn't Lloyd or Nia recognize that voice? Who's to say? That could probably not even be jay that might just be some guy that just happens to look like jay i don't remember jay wearing uh sunglasses at all during his time in the administration but realistically speaking why wouldn't this be jay especially if he looks like jay you know what i'm saying uh again in terms of the timeline this takes place the day after the blood moon stuff so after jay i guess failed to arrest bonzel below the mysteria monastery he came back to the administration possibly again i guess we'll see what the show reveals uh regarding that timeline if they even decide to reveal anything uh here's something that i touched on earlier uh the ninja basically going all out against the administration lloyd is using rising dragon here remember in season two part two in the tournament of the sources where lloyd was like no we should only use rising dragon to stop shatterspin well, apparently that rule does not apply to administration agents, so. <laughs> so I guess that's worth noting. Kind of overkill in my opinion, but you know, Lloyd is not the only one to do it. Nia also performs <laughs> Rising Dragon against the administration agents. Oh man, because why not, right? Why not? Sora rapidly uses her powers to uh, open up a new portal, and of course the, the administration agents are like, hey, where is your authorization? We don't have time for that. We have Rising Dragon and the ninja make their way back through the portal, back to Eren, back to Ryu, and they successfully got Sora's little mech back. So, yep, that's pretty much it for the comic. Like I said, nothing too crazy going on in this one, except for, again, I feel like them using Rising Dragon against the administration is kind of funny. I also liked seeing more of Sora's spinjitsu, as we can see down here or her, you know, proto spin jitsu, whatever you want to call it. And of course, the questionable J cameo. Is that J? Again, I don't know why it wouldn't be, considering that it looks exactly like J, but I could totally see them saying that this is just some other random agent, especially if he's making some type of announcement, but Lloyd and Nia do not recognize that voice. Maybe it's because it's been a minute since either of them have heard J's voice. Um, it is a little bit deeper in Dragons Rising too, or maybe it's because, you know, this announcement is only going to the earpieces of these agents could not really tell you, but overall, that'll pretty much wrap it up for my thoughts here regarding this comic. I enjoyed this one. Hopefully the folks who requested me, uh, to take a look at this comic enjoyed this as well. I think there are some cool things here that are happening, but ultimately this is one of the more least important ones I'd say that we've covered as of yet. So with that being said, guys, that'll pretty much wrap it up for my thoughts here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know down below in the comments what you thought of this comic. And like I said before in this video, try not to get too attached to the idea that I will be covering these comics often. I just wanted to talk about this one because again, I got a request to talk about this one specifically, and I thought it had some interesting content. Not all of the comics are like this. Most of them are kind of just middle of the road in my opinion. But with that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys did enjoy this one, feel free to like and subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I will talk to you guys again very, very soon. Peace.